everyone, my name is Tamara Chambers. I'm her brother, Taylor Chambers. And this is Tamara's Never Seen with Taylor. Today we're watching Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I've seen the cover of this movie lots of times mm -hmm. in DVD rental stores, but I've never watched it. Yeah, that one. I know it's about two people in Las Vegas on a lot of drugs. I didn't know it was with Johnny Depp. Oh, really? And it's the actor from Last Jedi. <laughs> How I know him. <laughs> Ike is pretty pumped about it. Get up here, Ike. Come here, bud. Come here. Come on, Ike. Who's the key? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doug Walker has said that he enjoyed it the first time, but it took him a few times to like really love it. Now it's one of his favorite movies. So cool. I'm excited to see like one of his favorite movies, but I'm also like, oh, is it gonna be the same where like the first time I see it, I'm gonna be like, ah, what? Okay. All right. Let's get into it. One, two, three. truly do not know what to think about this movie. But what happened? <laughs> what just happened? The cinematography sequences of him on acid was were they were just so awesome, especially the one with all the dinosaurs when they first arrived. Oh yeah, that dinosaur scene was really cool. That was awesome. I forgot about the dinosaur it was, scene. Well, cause so much happened. Yeah, there's a lot that doesn't make sense, so by the end it's just like a whole lot of jigsaw puzzle pieces. There's so many specifically funny points that I was like, oh I gotta talk about that when we're speaking about it in, in the reaction, but at this point, I it's gone none forever. Of them, none of them like connect in any way. It was like halfway through, and we were like, I think still waiting for a storyline. Yeah, man. When we finally realized there wasn't ever gonna be a storyline. Like, after they got done with the desert bike section, it's like, what's- Well, when he starts, when Johnny Depp's character starts leaving Vegas, and then he gets a call from his attorney, who's like, you should be in Vegas, but then he goes back and the attorney's in Vegas. Yeah. What, what, <laughs> what? At, Th that, at point. that point, it's like, oh, so there's just no story here. We're just in a drug-induced. Yeah, like, this happened. Cool. The movie's in the, in the fiction category. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. it's loosely based off of truths that, that are in a book. I'm probably getting a lot of this wrong, but it's it's fiction, but it's loosely based off of things that did happen on two specific trips that he took in the 70s with his attorney to Vegas under a lot of drugs and a lot of alcohol. Okay, the briefcase scene where he lists off like the grocery list of different substances. All the drugs and all of the alcohol that he has. That's, that's fun. Cause it's like right at the beginning and it's like, okay, so this is gonna be, this is what we got going on. So we know what we're in for, right? Right. Well, and, and at that point, it still seems like there was gonna be some sort of storyline. Well, cause it's just set up at that point. They're driving through the desert. It's like- Two friends. Literally, two friends drive through the desert. Just a car and a briefcase full of drugs. Toby McGuire. And Toby and, McGuire. And also Spider-Man. And it's yeah. like, okay, like, let's- Like, well, what a fun buddy cop Right, comedy let's see what's going right. on here. Yeah. And then it just literally starts making no sense after that. It starts like <laughs> doing like multiple timeline stuff. And then you like jump back to Toby Maguire. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. We're Toby Maguire in the car in the desert. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> which is great because you forget about Toby Maguire for a second. Right. Man. But there's a lot of things that were really funny, like the artist who only does Barbara Streisand portraits. That's right. hilarious. Lucy. Also, what the f happens in her storyline? What, what was with Lucy? Like, what? <laughs> why did they break up and like he loves her and then like she they see her and she doesn't. What is happening? Why did his attorney have so many lethal weapons on him at all times? Yeah. What's up with that? So, and like, he has a gun and he's like, I'm gonna kill someone in the next hour if I don't get out of here. It's like, well. Don't have a gun. That's the first problem. The only part that made me laugh out loud is I think we were saying, in our opinion, the best scene of the movie in North Vegas where they go to the diner and he asks how much the pie is and he's just like threatened her life and this poor yeah. waitress. Is like having a like a mental trauma it was like breakdown. Slim thick. He, oh, she was beautiful. Yeah, she did. Yeah. And he's just like disgusting and sweaty yeah. in his tank top. Gained forty pounds for the role. Yeah, uh, he said like, he gained forty pounds by eating donuts. <laughs> Same. He's there and he's like, "How much for the pie?" And he has the pie in his hand. He's behind the counter and it just looks like he's winding up to pie her. Uh, yeah, in she's his like face. forty cents for a slice, and he's like. 
Okay, cool. let me just take this pie. <laughs> the pie. Like, oh, he just wanted the pie. Okay. I was like, All right. <laughs> and that was hilarious. Johnny Depp was really good in this. I think when he had his hat on, he looked just like Walter, like identical to Walter. He did a really good job, especially, specifically his acid trip in the very beginning when he's getting into the hotel. I think that was really good. He portrays being high very well. And I'm always amazed at that. Same with being drunk. I think it's pretty hard to portray that when you're stone cold sober. So whether he was or not, he did a really good job. Once they went to the desert and he's like, oh, I'm trying to get these bikes, I'm trying to record these bikes, and I'm trying to drink this beer. I was like, what's going on? And then after that, I just completely lost, I just lost it. I yeah. don't know anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't done this in a long time, but I asked for predictions from people to see mainly just like get a gauge on what people think we're gonna think. The Eric Butts on Twitter says, he's the Star Wars guy. <laughs> he says, you'll say, what the f at least eight times. Yes, Eric, yes. Also, everyone should go follow Eric, he's awesome. I, we, the whole time, like every three minutes, we looked at each other like, You'll feel like the entire movie is taken completely out of context, as if you've just walked in on the weirdest part of a conversation. That is so, oh, Jordan. After this is all said and done, you should read the book. Hunter S. Thompson was one of a kind. I can see that, yes. I was saying while we were watching it, how could this be a book? Right. Because is it just like a page of like a story and then it goes on to a next page of a story? It's like, because there's no story. <laughs> Incoherent like imagery and... You'll be surprised by some of the cameos in this movie. Yeah, there were so many people popping up that we were like, oh, that's that one person. Cameron Diaz. Damn, girl uh, can get it in this yeah, movie. She's and all the time. Fine. She's so fine. She was in a random elevator scene, like so weirdly utilized, yeah. but she ruled in it. And there were so many cameos like that. There were so many times we were like, oh, it's that one guy from that one thing. Random, the, so random. It's that one midget that looks like uh, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken, we both thought that it was Christopher Walken. It's Christopher Walken. Were, during the bathtub scene, you'll be all WTF. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, not specifically just, just the bathroom yeah, scene, but I mean. but definitely during the bathtub scene. Yeah. How'd this guy become an attorney? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the legitimacy of his attorney status. <laughs> How many other clients does this guy have? Is it just him? Because if it's just Hunter S. Thompson, that makes sense. But if he has other clients, they should find representation elsewhere. <laughs> You'll swear off drugs forever. Next. <laughs> you'll want to watch this one with a big old glass of wine. Plus, you'll be swatting at invisible bats for a while. So, okay, I love that he's swatting at the invisible bats, but then there's an actual bat as roadkill? Was that something that was already there? Were they hinting that there were bats? What was the what was the symbolism of there being an actual dead bat? I don't know, Sam, is it on your mind? Is it? Is it... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There were a, a lot of moments where I was like, what is real right. <laughs> in this movie? Well, what is actually Well, because they got happening? like multiple timeline shit going on half the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, also all that stuff with the things outside of Vegas, like when he was in that bathroom and the, the LSD got on his sleeve and that was, was yeah, that, that in guy's, Vegas? Yeah, that guy licking his sleeve. Sure, and like who was the guy that was like, what, <laughs> what, what are you doing? <laughs> you will wonder if it's accurate to real life drug use. <laughs> you will at least be impressed by the visuals. Oh my yeah. god, yeah. They were really, really, really impressive and cool. And kept my attention, which is so weird, because usually the non-story movies like this, to be quite honest, they kind of bore me. This at least kept my attention. My. So the visuals were a giant part of that. You'll feel like you need to be in rehab by the end. They certainly needed to be in rehab, sure. Um, yeah, that knife guy. Yeah, man. Is it weird though that I kind of found him se sexy, like a little bit? His, his mustache and his hair was pretty cool. It's luscious. You may not know what you just saw, but you're probably gonna like it. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. The general consensus is that 
okay, you're not supposed to really understand this. I, yeah. It's expected that, like, you're not gonna get it. Because there's a lot of Tamara's Never Seen episodes that I, like, don't understand what I, something I should have understood. And everyone in the comments are like, you idiot, you <sighs> stupid simpleton. <sighs> Not like everyone super gets it, and we're just both <laughs> <So> like. I, <laughs> I, don't know. I enjoyed it. I am confused by it, and I definitely recognize that it's something I need to see more than once. But I, I super enjoyed it. I wish that I had a passion in life that was as specific as painting only Barbra Streisand portraits. Yeah, to find that fire. Thank you so much for watching this very weird experience for Taylor and I. I will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Okay, let's do a uh, thumbnail. Oh shit, I wish I had blonde long hair. <laughs> <laughs>